I'm going to I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, a very great uh, Provence rosé. So a lot of Provence rosé are kind of uh, you know easy to drink and summery and all that. Uh, we are very lucky. We are going we are working with like very age worthy, super beautifully crafted rosé from Provence. So um, if I have to uh, to take you for a description of how how we taste the wine, um, first I will I will care about the color a little bit. So we'll, I will look at it here. It's what we call a salmon, or almost like onion peel. Uh, there is a slight inch of orange. A lot of people are scared of orange in roses. They should not. If it's really good wine, uh, you don't really care about the color. At the end, you are drinking the wine. You are not drinking the color. So here is brilliant uh, and really showing, you know, really a, a, a nice reflection of the light. I go pretty quick on the color because I'm more interested by how the wine smell and taste. So. Give it a quick sniff, not too long. If you swirl too much, you're going to lose a lot of the aromatics. So very quick sniff. And you can smell really, really nice floral expression, like orange blossom. It's very faint, it's subtle. Uh, something a bit riper, like sweet citrus are here, mandarin and tangerine on a peel. And you get a bit of, of paper. It's not an overly aromatic nose. Um, if you swirl a little bit more, you're going to pay attention and say, oh, there is no oak here. You can smell like a thinking that's been re-preserved to, to bring freshness and a feeling of ripeness. Um, and that comp like combination of both, I think, with a little bit of time, shows through um, licorice and fennel and almost anise-like quality. And then I'm tasting, so usually I speed, but I'm going to just drink today. <laughs> So what I like here is definitely a, a beautiful food wine. We, we put it by the glass at the restaurant because it's the winter and I really wanted to have still rosé because the food of chef is full of vegetables even in winter and that works so well. So there is a definitely a lushiness, you, you, it's almost a sweetness, the wine is dry but you can feel a ripeness, there is a coating, almost a, a, an oily coating that is super super elegant. Start with that kind of power, and then after a couple of seconds, the wine starts to get super salty and dry, and it finishes on that dry side. The texture is fantastic because you can play with a little bit richer dish without getting anything heavy. In terms of aromatics, it's really more like a little bit more fruit forward than what I was on the nose. It's really like white peach, that tangerine, the nectarine is here, a bit of most of papaya, and then the florality is back, and then the anise like is here. So it's a, it's a very beautiful, subtle, but taking you in multiple directions. We are in the winter, so um, you can have some, once again, some like cold, cold seawater fish right now can be, can be very nice. Chef is doing a very interesting dish here uh, with shellfish. He's grilling some sepia with a little bit of squash that have been just toasted and he's finishing that with a bit of um, 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 pine nut seeds. Uh, so that will be a really nice pairing for the winter. But if we go in the summer and the 18 rosé is going to come soon, uh, just think every time you start to get asparagus or greens or this type of thing, just grilled, a bit of olive oil, that's fantastic. And um, this type of rosé for me has enough body to go with also uh, rocks fish. So don't hesitate to go with monkfish, with snapper and all that. That would be nice, even with white poultry. Oh. <music>